Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church on this, the uh, last festival Sunday of the church year. Um, This weekend, as we gather for worship, we also observe Memorial Day uh, this weekend in our country, and we uh, we pause to think about the the sacrifice and the bravery that makes it possible for us to gather in worship. And so, um, a uh, a hearty thank you to the Lord for uh, placing those gifts and talents and sacrifices inside of uh, His people in this uh, great land that we call home. Uh, One announcement that I'd like to make this morning is that, uh, first of all, there's no Bible class today. We usually skip holiday weekends with kids uh, out of school. Um, We will have it next weekend. That'll be kind of the um, official last Sunday of uh, Sunday school for the summer. Uh, But this year, we're going to have uh, one option for adults online on our Facebook page uh, every Sunday from 9.30 to 10.30 um, with uh, a guest Bible study presenter. So uh, I hope you will uh, tune in for that if that's something that is uh, interesting for you, if that's something that you missed through the summer months. um, I know I'm kind of looking forward to uh, checking it out between services. Um, Today... As some of you uh, might be aware, uh, as Trinity Sunday, it's the day that we set aside every year to remember the way that God reveals Himself to us. And it's pretty tricky, to be honest. There's a reason we have three creeds. It's what the, uh, the church has done every time there's some confusion about the nature of God. They sit down and debate and write a creed. That's where our creeds come from. And uh, I have to tell you, it's the Sunday of the church year that pastors are not super excited about preaching uh, because we like to have the answers, and today we just don't. It's an impossible thing for the human mind to understand the nature of God, and instead we have to look at the way that God reveals Himself in His relationship to us and the ways that He serves us and loves us and uh, makes Himself a part of our lives each and every day. And so we're going to explore that concept together uh, through our readings, our our message, our hymns this morning. And uh, my hope and prayer is that 
Uh, it will be a blessing for you in your walk with the Lord and uh, your day and your week as you begin it in his name and with his blessing. And with that said, I invite you to stand as we uh, do just that and begin worship with our hymn of invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Please kneel or be seated for a time of confession. We confess together. 
Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Please be seated. The first reading this morning comes from Acts, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this 
that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, 
and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken forty-six years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Now, as is our tradition on Trinity Sunday, we will read the Athanasian Creed responsively. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith is this. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is God begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man born from the substance of his mother in this age.
equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's message starts with our gospel lesson, and I'd like to highlight the following words of Jesus to start. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So far the text. Well, it was about a week and a half ago, Alyssa and I were out of town for a couple of days, 
and primarily we had to go back and forth from the place we were staying to our destination a number of times. You know how this goes. And Alyssa, being a very capable passenger, she was giving me directions from the GPS on her phone and I was driving. It was a good system. It's always a good system. Now, after we had done this drive back and forth a few times, she says to me, do you still need the directions? See, she didn't need them anymore. She had it in her head. I still needed them. I had no idea where I was going, not even the first turn. Alyssa is good with geography. She's good with directions. These kinds of things happen to me here and there. Just this last Wednesday, for another example, I was done teaching Bible class, and it was about a quarter after 11, and someone comes up to me and asks, well, when you said this thing was north and this thing was south, didn't you mean the opposite? And I did. I think it was right in my head, but I'm not positive it was right in my head at the time. I just don't get geography. We don't, we don't mix. I don't know what it is. But there are lots of things in life that confuse us or step outside of our understanding or our abilities. And for that, usually, we need an Alyssa to show us the way, something like that. So if we need help with, say, uh, technology and it's over our head, we need a Brandon. If we need help with gardening, we need a Judy or an Allen. Real estate, we need a Waz. You need these people around to help us where we come up short. You need your experts, your geniuses, the people that just get things that you don't. And today is Trinity Sunday, and I'm preaching, and I don't understand how it works. The problem with this, though, is that nobody does. There's not just a Judy or an Alyssa to come up and help out and explain things. There just isn't one when it comes to the Trinity, and there never has been one when it comes to the Trinity. The only person that has ever lived and walked and breathed and truly understood it was Jesus, and He's part of it. Well, the church has always tried to explain the Trinity. There have been some best guesses, some real good, solid efforts. For example, uh, it's been said the Trinity is like water, which can become steam or ice. The problem with that is once some water becomes steam, it's no longer water, and once it's ice, it's no longer water, and so that doesn't work. Some people have said it's like an egg with a shell and a yolk and a white, but, well, then those things are distinct and you can take them apart and never to return. Some people have said it's like a three-leaf clover, except each of the three, well, they're exactly the same. There's no difference among them, and so that doesn't quite work. My favorite one that doesn't work, of course, is the peanut butter and jelly sandwich with the bread and the peanut butter and the jelly. And well, that doesn't work either. No matter how hard you smash it together, those are three still distinct things. Nobody perfectly understands the nature of God. So what do we do with that? I think the first thing that we do to understand the nature of God is to understand ourselves a little bit better. We are the people who very often can be distracted by any number of multitudes of things in the world around us that will motivate us and tempt us to do awful things. Flipping the channels on the TV, we can see a car that we have to have, and it changes the trajectory of our goals. We so often can do uh, all these kinds of coveting to the point where we can't celebrate for one another, we just get jealous of one another. We are the people who can even root against our neighbor because we're insecure about their accomplishments. It's difficult to be us. We are the people who can be sitting right in front of a sign that gives a direction and decide to do the opposite just because we want to. Now, 
this is a pretty tough starting point. The brokenness of our sinful nature that plagues our days and our moments, that's a tough starting spot to understand who God is. But the thing is that when we see in our gospel lesson, for God so loved the world, that's where we start. We start with our brokenness, and we see that God's actions and God's words as He reveals them to us always and forever begin and end with knowing the absolute fact and assurance that He loves you. So, how do we know that this three-in-one, one-in-three exists? Well, it's everywhere. Right from creation in Scripture, we see this uh, singular God speak to Himself in the plural, let us make man in our own image. We see that any number of times through Scripture. We see uh, Jesus stand on the beach to be baptized, and the Father speaks and the Spirit descends. We see the Father speak again in the presence of the Son at the transfiguration. We see any number of spots where we see God coming in in the plural, but then the first creed of the church, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, sets us back in the singular again. And so the first thing about God that we know that's revealed to us is that He's singular and plural. He's one in three, three in one. So what do those three persons have to do with us? What do those three persons reveal to us in our brokenness? How do they all fall back on God loving us? Well, it starts with the Father. He's, first of all, the lawgiver. That means that the natural law that's in your heart comes from Him, and that works within us all the time. So, from the urge to take another kid's toys in the stand box to the urge to cheat playing bridge and canasta and everywhere in between, the Father is there, providing the law and sowing the law into our hearts. He gave Moses the Ten Commandments that guide us, but He's also the Creator. So, the fact that we have babies being born and crying and new leaves sprouting on trees in the spring and grass to cut is all because of Him. The fact that sugar is sweet is because of Him. The fact that doctors make discoveries is because of Him. The fact that jokes are funny is because of Him, and He creates and He creates and He creates all the time. But it's that lawgiver part that kind of rolls out the runway for his most important task, and that's the sending of his only begotten Son. See, he sees us in our brokenness. He feels the love that guides and moves the very nature of who he is, and he sends his Son into the world. The Son, the Son has the toughest part. I think the best way to understand this today is to look in our epistle lesson, which says that He made Him to be sin who knew no sin. Now, let's just stop and think about that for a second. What that's saying is Paul is actually calling Jesus sin. That's what Paul is calling Jesus. Now, how can he do that? Well, because Jesus took all of our sin onto Himself, and there was so much sin that when the Father looked at the Son, that's all He saw. And that the, the wrath, the punishment for all the sin that we deserve came full force onto Jesus. And so, Paul calls Him sin for us. But the Son never wavers. The plan was Jesus from the first sin in the Garden of Eden, and no matter how rough things got, no matter how bad we got, no matter how much the sin stared in God's face and went the other way, the plan was always Jesus, and Jesus obediently goes and gives His life for you and for me, and then He rises from the dead to defeat death 
forever. Well, this opens access again to heaven for us. But how do we get there? How do we get to the whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life? How do we get there? We need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one that empowers us to love God and serve our neighbor. The Holy Spirit's the one that takes the word of the Lord and the waters of baptism and ignites it into faith. The Holy Spirit's the one that fills our hearts once again with faith when we go to the table of the Lord, when we hear the word of the Lord. The Holy Spirit's the one that draws us into situations to share our faith. The Holy Spirit's the one that empowers us and leads us and provides opportunities to serve our neighbor and spread the good news. The Holy Spirit is the one that provides the capacity to believe that God would leave his throne to become sin and suffer here for us. So, the Trinity might be pretty confusing to figure out how one can be three and three can be one, but it really helps when it comes to being bad at directions because the directions, the way to heaven is lost in our brokenness, and the Trinity tells us that every moment of every day that we are loved and served and empowered to follow the Lord, to be carried by the Lord to life eternal, and that our sins are forgiven to make that possible, that faith is granted to make that possible, and it even guarantees that the truth of what's been done for us and what the Trinity does for us will be imprinted on our hearts and become part of who we are. And so we may not be able to fully understand the Trinity, but that doesn't stop the Trinity from loving you and serving you as the core component of who he is every day, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which certainly surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ to life eternal. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, for the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and His kingdom extended. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the Holy Christian Church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work that God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the educational institutions of our synod, for our preschools, our day schools, and high schools, our colleges and universities, and for our seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For all who partake this day of Christ's holy body and blood, that in their eating and drinking they may receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins and the renewal of life, and have a foretaste of the feast to come, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father, let us pray to the Lord. For the government and all who have been set into positions of leadership, and all those who serve in the military, especially remembering Renee, Scott, Dan, Kevin, Rachel, Abby, Thomas, Jim, Tim, Jonathan, Paul, Chandler, Stephen, Randall, Chris, Sean, Stephen, Evan, Laith, Paul, Nathan, 
with a special remembrance of thanksgiving for all those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for us, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of the people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who serve in worthy occupations, professions, arts, and sciences, that God would grant them skill and integrity in the performance of their responsibilities and valued service through their vocations, let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them, let us pray to the Lord. For all the faithful, that the Spirit would lead them to cheerful, generous giving from the bounty the Lord provides to support the church and to help those in need, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, especially remembering Carl, Heather, Chaya, Wendy, Bruce, Bowie, Haywood, Ellen, George, Linda, Carrie, Jake, Fifi, Jeff, Nancy, Ben, Judy, Catherine, Pastor Fred, Liz, Pastor Cole, Paul, Lisa, Mark, Rob, Ernie, Sebride, Lisa, Sam, Anna, Ned, Ina, Vinny, Ralph, Lauren, and John, that God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who mourn, especially remembering the family and friends of Jack, that their time in sorrow they would not lose hope, but rely on God's promise that he will never leave them or forsake them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they may always remember the giver of every gift and give him heartfelt thanks, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and certainly that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, for the countless blessings that you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven will lord and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and say, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, 
king of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruit of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that comes to us in his body and blood. Hear us, we pray, in his name as, as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day day our daily bread, and forgive our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he, gave it to, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Teacher, true body broken for you. 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 This is true bad 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 broken for you. May the blessing and grace be with you always. This is true bad broken for you. 
Is it true about the broken for you? The blood of Christ shed for you. Is it true about the broken for you? The blood of Christ shed for you. Is it true about the broken for you? The true body and true blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith to life everlasting, depart in peace and joy. Amen. Amen. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The, the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
I go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come on, come on. 